Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. Today we're going to be having a little bit of fun and getting some work done. So we've got to take our John Deere tractor, which you don't see right here because it's up there by the manure spreader. We've got to take that and we've got to load it up with all of our manure and spread it out on our pastures. It's springtime. It's a little bit late on this. We really should have spread this in the fall so that all that manure could have been working on those roots all fall along. But our John Deere tractor has been down for... Gosh, I'm going to say a month and a half, something like that. We had a new clutch put in it. The new clutch was out of balance from John Deere, and we had to take it back, and it took another two and a half weeks or so to get another clutch in, get everything balanced, and get it back together. So come along today. The first thing I have to do here is I've got to hook this thing up and get the battery charged on it so that we can make a video tomorrow. So tune in to tomorrow's video. It'll be a good time. There'll be a link at the end of this video if you haven't seen tomorrow's video. That's when we'll be working on the garden. So today we're going to fire up the manure spreader on the John Deere 5065 and let her rip, tater chip. All right? Woo! I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. Oh, prepare to hear me gripe. This battery will not stay up. There is no drain on the battery. It's a good battery. However, parked up here, the 240's been parked in here for basically the whole winter. I'll fire it up once a month or so and let it run for about 30 minutes. It's not enough. It's not enough to keep a charge on this battery. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump this off. Now I've got an extra long set of jumper cables. I'll post the link down the video description to these really long jumper cables. What we're gonna do is hook up to our battery here and we're gonna run off the Kubota uh, RTV X1140. And I'm gonna explain why I'm griping here. I'm not griping about the battery, I get it. But I am gonna gripe about the location of the battery on the Kubota. Let me show you. Okay, so in my humble, Farmer Josh opinion here, this battery compartment, uh, this location of this battery is in a ridiculous place. Uh, in order to access the battery, I have to pull these two little knobs. There's no like quick pop to get this thing out. And it's, to me, it's just a pain in the butt. Now this is a farm utility vehicle, okay? So this is my only gripe. I have two gripes about the Kubota. The Kubota doesn't have the power that my John Deere Gator does, but I understand that. And when we bought it, we knew that. We, we bought it with the understanding that the Kubota was not gonna have the power, but it has the strength. In other words, it's got the torque. It has uh, a tractor system. In other words, the entire, uh, running gear on this thing is based on a tractor platform. So it's all hydrostatic based on the hydraulic flow. Now, that being said, the hydraulic flow on this thing should be fast enough to get it up a hill in high gear with some people on here, I would think. I think a little bit of re-engineering on Kubota's part would not be a bad idea. I'm just gonna say it, man. I, I'm, uh, <laughs> I would love to have Kubota as a sponsor on the YouTube channel here. However, uh, I, I think that this machine right here is uh, kind of a pig when it when it's going up a hill now here we are we've got our battery terminals got everything hooked up we're going to go ahead and jump the tractor off it's not that big of an inconvenience but it is an inconvenience for me to have to pull this piece of plastic off uh, every time i need to jump a critter off i need to be able to flip up and access my battery the gator has it underneath the passenger seat um, also this is the plastic piece that's that holds this thing in place now there are rubber grommets that inevitably will fall out that hold these little pins in place and this one's already fallen out. Th those are a few things that I'm disappointed in. I'd rather have easier access to the battery for jumping off equipment because that's just part of having a farm and I would rather go a little bit faster when I put the pedal down, I put the hammer down man and I don't get what I need. Uh, I really don't. And we'll do a comparison of the John Deere Gator versus the Kubota X1140 in a future video. In the meantime here, I fired up the Kubota. I'm letting it run a little bit. We're gonna charge this up. We're gonna go ahead and start the skid loader and let it get to good operating temperature. A new pair of shades today man these things are awesome they're oakley's they're really really lightweight i mean you barely notice them on your face and they'll work with earmuffs 
the other glasses I have won't work so good with earmuffs for hearing protection. So what we got to do, we got to drop the tooth bucket and we got to go over here and pick up the smooth bucket. We have two smooth buckets. One of them's going on dad's tractor and the other one is sitting right there. So we're going to drop the tooth bucket and put the smooth bucket on and that way we can utilize most all of this manure. Fingers crossed, we just took the skid loader up to the manure spreader. I'm pretty sure this thing is going to start up no problem. We're going to take it down to the garage and throw it on the battery charger so we can work it tomorrow. Contact! Yeah. See what I mean? This is annoying. Now that we've got the tractor started, this slows us down. We're up here at the manure spreader. It seems like we got the whole farm here. We got the Kubota, <laughs> the skid steer, and the 5065. Uh, today we're going to be testing something out that I have not used uh, in any video just yet. We ordered it and I can't find it. There it is. We're going to be testing out this critter right here. Uh, we'll do a full-on video about it. This is the PTO link. You've probably seen ads for this on the channel popping up. I have no control over those ads. But I did reach out to the PTO link folks and I ordered myself a couple PTO links. So we're going to give them a shot. And in a future video, we'll do a full-on review of this critter. But for today, we're just going to put it to work and see how it does. We're letting the 5065 warm up right now. The cool thing about this and the YouTube channel here is that I can take things that you guys might be considering the purchase of like those grouser tracks right there and I can put them to work and give you a real world opinion on it so that's the cool thing about having this YouTube channel that's what it's all about a lot of folks don't get it they're like ah you got this you got that you're spending all this money well that's what it's about man that's what this whole thing is about that's why you're subscribed to Stony Ridge Farmer if you are subscribed if you're not jump in and subscribe but that's why you're here is to learn what we're doing on our land look how green that is nobody else's land is that green in the county man unbelievable what we're doing works and we're sharing it with you like this abi monster manure spreader abi makes a ton of different types of manure spreaders i'll post a link down in the video description to abi's website they do have a coupon code i do believe for stony ridge farm followers so if i can find that we'll post it down there too this is a beast of a manure spreader it's going to make quick work of all this manure we've got here and believe it or not that's probably five tandem dump truck loads of manure that's a lot of composted manure it's black gold and what we're doing here is spreading it out not on this field because it's green and beautiful but on another field that we just seeded i'm going to say last year last spring we seeded this so you can see this is sparse and this is luscious this was seeded four years ago i think and let me correct myself i think this was seeded two years ago that's what we're doing putting nutrient in the soil that good butt fertilizer so we always shut her down before we start hooking stuff up back here this is connected with four hoses, a PTO shaft, and a pin. It is <laughs> absolutely attached to this tractor. It ain't no doubt about it. We're going to go ahead and we're going to slip the PTO link. We're going to do that last, actually. We're going to go ahead and hook up our hydraulic hoses. Everything's here. We have two sets of lines. Before I plug them in, I'm going to wipe them off. I got a rag over here. Keep a rag on your tractor, guys. So you can wipe these hydraulic lines off before you hook them up. No use in introducing any trash that you don't have to into your system. These are the quick attach type hydraulic lines for a tractor. I think they're called Pioneer Couplers. Correct me if I'm wrong. I have two small hoses and two big hoses. One's labeled with a black zip tie. That tells me this one's labeled with a black zip tie. And it goes together with that one. 
So press it in. It's nice when this goes smooth. Now I have an extension brought back from my loader arm, okay? And that's what I'm gonna raise the gate. When you see this thing in action, there's a gate on the rear. I'll show it to you in a second, but it opens up and allows the manure to flow towards the back. Quick coupler. There it is, that's quick, quick enough. So this is the extension that I have right here. And let's talk a little bit about education, educational moment. This is the first tractor I ever bought. I had no idea what to look for. All I was looking for is something that was in the 50 to 70 horsepower range and something that was affordable in my budget and it was four wheel drive. Little did I know that I needed two rear remotes. I didn't know that. So now I have to run this extension up to my loader arm handle, which is right here. It makes it a bit of a pain. So I'll disconnect these guys, these quick connects. And oftentimes <laughs> they are not very quick. <laughs> and then we'll reconnect our uh, other connectors. John Deere really did me right, man. They uh, they took this tractor in, they did a, a clutch on it, and they stood by their work, which is awesome, and they neatened up this whole area. I'm really happy about that. I'll go back to them for sure. So let's fire it up and get cooking. Wait, we can't do that. We gotta show you the PTO link, come on. This is as simple as I can explain it. This is not a how-to video. I am not a pro at this. The PTO link comes like this. There's a pin we'll pull out. Set that to the side. This is how it connects. Well, there's another pin right here. So we push that, I get, or pull it. I guess you call that a detent. And it releases your PTO shaft just like that okay so that's going to be our pto connection what we're going to do is we're going to take this end and this end has a coupler on it and we're going to slide it onto the pto shaft of the tractor here so no more worries about everything not fitting up like it's supposed to exactly because the pto link is turnable in other words we can turn it and fit it without having to start the tractor and move that pto shaft uh, a half inch or whatever okay so now this end the male end goes into the receiver on the implement and what this does is supposedly simplifies this operation this is how it works this is just this is my first time guys so um supposed to be the best thing since sliced bread right pto link oh i gotta turn that shaft just a little bit there we go okay cool so that's it, that's PTO link. The whole goal with the PTO link is to simplify this process. Okay, man, it's a little bit of a struggle. I think it'd be easier if we were on like a bush hog or something like that, or a brush cutter. Oh, here we go. Uh, <laughs> never mind, man, it just clicked right in. Awesome. So we'll take our pin right here and we'll put it opposite. And we'll it. There it goes. All right, that's how PTO link works. It's on there. We're gonna put it to work, man. I'll give you guys some feedback. I just wanted to use it this first time before I did any kind of review so I could give you some feedback on exactly what this thing was all about. If it does simplify your life or not. So far, so good. Seems great. Awesome. Let's get moving. It was just loaded full of earthworms. So what I'm doing is spreading carbon, spreading nitrogen out on the land and spreading earthworms, man. Let's throw the drone up and get some footage.
getting her done, man. Got <laughs> probably five more loads of manure to spread right here, guys. Just wanted to kind of show you what the heck was going on. Man, believe it or not, I'm still getting a vibration, a strong vibration from the 5065. It sounds like and feels like bottom end on the motor, and it has nine, well, I think it's a thousand hours on it right now. It's just gone out of warranty. We've had it in the shop huh, multiple times. I just called the John Deere folks. They're coming back up here, and I'm gonna load this thing. The last load of manure is gonna be dedicated to the John Deere folks. So this is the part where I say goodbye. That's what's going on on the farm today, guys. Uh, if you were watching a video the other day, we were out here working these rocks up with the Ventrac tractor, pushing them all up into piles. You can see I've got a bunch of piles. We're gonna take the skid steer and pick up those piles and take them and dump them in holes that we have, places that have washed out here on the farm. Cool, lots going on. Can't wait, we're gonna be tilling the garden in the next video, I hope. So we'll see you guys next time on Stony Ridge Farm. I hope you enjoyed watching the equipment go to work. All right, woo!